What will web development look like in 2020? Let's see. It seems like there is a new language or technology that comes out every day, so it can be difficult to stay on top of your web development game. It requires constant learning and adapting. And it doesn't matter where you're at in web development, front end, back end, full stack, mobile solutions, or web apps, the constant change is universal. So what technologies should you look out for in 2020? We're going to cover all of the current and popular web development technologies. And by no means do you need to learn everything that you see in this video. Once you get comfortable with one technology, start learning another. This guide is going to focus on full stack development, but if your goal is only front end development or back end development, just pick out the technologies that are applicable to that job role. So if you're just getting started, let's check out some tools and software that you're going to need. First, you're going to need a code editor, and I recommend VS Code. VS Code is free, open source, it has great support from the community and great extensions. I have a video on how to set up VS Code for web development, and I'll put a link in the description below. Next, you're going to need a web browser. I would recommend Chrome or Firefox. I prefer Chrome. You're going to need a few editor extensions. VS Code has a lot of extensions, and among the top of those that I would recommend are Live Server and Live SAS Compiler if you're going to be working with SAS. I have a video on my top 10 favorite VS Code extensions as well, and I'll put a link in the description. The next few are optional. So if your goal is to become a web designer, you may want to get familiar with Adobe XD or Figma, or at the very least something like Photoshop or GIMP. At some point, deployment tools are going to be necessary. An FTP client and an SSH tool are examples of those. And I would also recommend a third-party terminal like Git Bash, especially if you're working from Windows. So again, if you're just starting out, I will always recommend that you start with HTML and CSS. Now these are not programming languages. HTML is a markup language, and CSS is a style sheet language. But these are the building blocks of the web. Every web page or web app, no matter what framework or server-side language you're using, ultimately ends up being HTML and CSS. So you'll need to learn semantic HTML5 elements, basic CSS like positioning, box model, flexbox, grid, custom properties. You'll need to learn about responsive layouts like media queries, rem units, and the mobile first approach. And lastly, browser dev tools. Get familiar with them. They will help you to troubleshoot issues and see what is being rendered in the browser. I have videos on almost all of these subjects on my channel and I'll include links in the description below. So after you've created a basic website, you're going to want to deploy it somewhere. So the traditional approach would be getting a domain name and managed hosting with cPanel and then using an FTP file uploader such as FileZilla to upload the files. cPanel provides a ton of functionality and makes it easy to set up a website, to set up email addresses, and so many other things. If managed hosting with cPanel is the route you're wanting to take, I would recommend Web Hosting Squared. Web Hosting Squared is very affordable and reliable. There's a link in the description below. If you just have a very basic website and you just want to put it up somewhere and you don't care about all the bells and whistles of cPanel, you could use static hosting such as Netlify or GitHub Pages. These are free, but again, they don't come with all the bells and whistles of cPanel. Next, you're going to want to learn JavaScript. I recommend vanilla JavaScript, just plain JavaScript without any frameworks. I get this question a lot. Should I start learning React? React uses JavaScript. So if you don't know JavaScript, then you're going to have a hard time learning React. So learn the basics of JavaScript, data types, functions, conditionals, loops. Learn about manipulating the document object model and events. Learn about the fetch API and JSON. And then all of the ES6 and beyond features such as arrow functions, promises, async await, destructuring, and template literals. These are all things that you're going to use in React. I have a crash course on JavaScript, as well as a video on the Fetch API and another video on JSON. I'll put links in the description below. All right, there are a few side technologies that you're gonna to wanna to learn as well. So Git and GitHub. Git is a version control system. In my opinion, it's the most popular version control system out there. There are others, but the majority of companies use Git. It may not always be used alongside GitHub, uh, but it is more commonly used with GitHub as its remote repository. Next, you're going to want to learn some basic command lines. So learn about NPM, that's Node Packet Manager. 
learn about the git command line, and basic navigation, how to create files and folders, how to navigate the folder structure, very basic things. Don't let the command line scare you. Next, APIs and REST. So learn about how to retrieve data from external sources. And lastly, SAS. So SAS is a CSS precompiler, and it is literally CSS with superpowers. It makes writing CSS more like a programming language. You're able to nest and use mixins and functions, and it just makes it easier, in my opinion, to write CSS. I have videos on Git and SAS on my channel, and I'll put links in the description below. Now let's talk about some frameworks and backend languages. So once you've gotten familiar with HTML and CSS and JavaScript, you could start moving on to some frameworks. For HTML and CSS, the most popular framework is Bootstrap. I do not recommend Bootstrap for every project. If you just need to quickly prototype a project, use Bootstrap. It's quick, it's easy. If you want to have just a very basic website and you don't care that it looks like a Bootstrap theme, then use Bootstrap. But if you're trying to create a custom website, don't use Bootstrap. You're going to end up fighting with Bootstrap more than it's going to help you. On the front end with JavaScript, there's three frameworks that I would recommend, and that is Angular, Vue, and React. And I'll show you in a minute on some charts which ones are more popular. In my opinion, React is the most popular right now. Angular is kind of falling away, again, in my opinion. Uh, it is very corporate centric. It's for very large applications and complex applications. It does have its place and by no means are any of these technologies going away. And then Vue is gaining a lot of popularity as well. And in my opinion, Vue is the easiest to learn. And moving on to backend technologies, backend languages, Node.js is not a framework, but it is based on JavaScript. So if you already know JavaScript, Node has tons of packages that can expand. You can install something like Express and create a web server. So if you're looking into backend development and you already know JavaScript, Node.js would be the way to go. The other very popular backend language that I think is taking over is Python. And when it comes to machine learning and AI, Python is king. Here's a graph of the top languages according to Stack Overflow questions. We can see here that back in 2009, C Sharp was way up here, and you can see over the years, now it is pretty low. And Python started out pretty low, and you could see this tremendous growth in the past few years. JavaScript right below that, Java below that. And then we have PHP, which has taken a bit of a decline in the last couple of years. And then C++, which has been pretty steady throughout the years. Now, again, by no means are any of these languages going away. But what I would focus my attention on is, number one, I would still say JavaScript is first. And number two, I would say is Python. Now let's take a look at the top frameworks according to Stack Overflow questions. Now I know that jQuery is not a framework and even React is technically not a framework, uh, but I wanted to include this because jQuery in the beginning was such a crutch for so many people. Learning vanilla JavaScript is so important before learning a framework. You can see the huge decline in the use of jQuery. And then we see in green is Angular. Over the past two or three years, it's remained pretty steady but React has overtaken it. And we can see in purple, Vue has gained quite a bit of traction as well, and it's continuously growing. So for frameworks, I would recommend React and Vue. Now let's look at some trends to look out for in 2020. AI and chatbots. So AI is widely used to imitate human intelligence and perform simple as well as complex functions like the ability to learn and analyze information, collect data, understand emotions of humans, or to solve complex business challenges and problems. AI is everywhere, so we need to get used to it. It's not going away. Like I said before, Python is the king of AI right now. But there are great JavaScript libraries as well, like TensorFlow. And this is something that I'm personally going to be focusing on in 2020. The next thing would be interactive design and motion UI. The big issue here is attention span. The average attention span of a human in 2000 was 12 seconds. The average attention span of a human now is 8 seconds. 
and the average attention span of a goldfish is 9 seconds. So let me give you some examples of interactive design and motion UI. So Zurb has a motion UI SAS library for creating CSS transitions and animations. So we can control the speed, the easing, let's add a bounce to it, and we could say scale up, scale down, slide in left, fade in, spin in, hinge in. There's so many things that you can do with this to animate your website. In one of my upcoming videos, I'm going to cover how to use this in your project. On Dribble, here's an example of a dashboard with animation by Red Comet. You can see how this would keep the attention of the user. The next trend would be progressive web apps. Progressive web apps are regular web apps that give the user a native app experience. One of the main features is the ability to work offline by using service workers. So this allows the user to be able to use an app that is not actually installed on their phone. It's not taking up any space, but it looks and feels like an app. The next trend we talked about briefly earlier is responsive web design. As I'm sure you're already aware, most people use their mobile devices to browse the internet. So websites have to be responsive. So be sure that you design for the mobile experience first and then scale up to the tablet and desktop. Your website will even rank higher on Google if it's responsive. Next is mobile app development. So we can build native mobile apps without knowing Java or Swift. There are React Native, Native Script, and Ionic. Ionic used to be hybrid only, but now they have a native option as well. And next is desktop app development with Electron. Electron uses Chromium and Node.js. It's cross-platform with support for Windows, Mac, and Linux. There are a lot of desktop apps today that are built with Electron, such as VS Code. Next on the list is GraphQL. GraphQL is a new way of thinking about APIs. You are able to ask only for what you want, and it's easier to write queries, very similar to JSON. And last is TypeScript. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. TypeScript is used in Angular, and so if you'll be learning Angular, you're going to learn TypeScript. All right, so what next? Well, focus on the technology used in your current job or your aspiring job. So if your current employer uses Angular, focus on Angular. If the company that you're interviewing with uses React, focus on React before your interview. And then learn other technologies in your spare time, if that is even a thing. I don't have any spare time. But if you've gotten comfortable with JavaScript and then you want to learn a little bit of Python in your spare time, then do that. But stay up to date with trends and technology. That's the hardest thing to do. But remember that learning something new takes time. It takes time to get good at something. So be patient. Take your time. Never stop learning and don't give up. Well, that's going to be it for this video. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. But before you go, if you liked this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. I upload new content every week, so hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. If my videos have helped you in any way and you have the means to do so, support me on Patreon. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at CodeStacker. Thanks for watching.